Hello. I promise, there is more music and game related content coming. I'm just trying to wrap my head around this next episode of DLC. Consider doing some shorter videos in between and... Well, this is an update of something else that's going on in my life that has distracted me. Just an example of many things. So, as you can see, we're doing pretty well on looking after plants this year. We've got bean that's going up to the bloody ceiling. This guy's still doing quite well. Uh, usually we kill plants pretty quickly. But among all the plants we have around the house, my wife's got this particularly fussy little thing. It's from like rainforest floors. But if you give it anything other than distilled water or perhaps rainwater, it will just burn up at the crisp at the tips of the leaves and eventually die. So we've decided to put a bucket out and collect rainwater. The first day we did this was literally last Tuesday. And I go out there the next day, I've forgotten that that's why the bucket's there, by the way. And I see in the middle of the bucket, this thing that kind of looks like a pebble, about three, three and a half centimeters. And I wonder what it is, why it's there. And I tip the bucket slightly. And suddenly there are legs everywhere. Not everywhere. There are six legs. <laughs> just sort of scrabbling around in the water. Looks like this insect isn't coping. I panic, I tip it out on the grass, thinking I need to save this insect's life. At first I thought maybe it might be a wax beetle. It's got kind of a shiny body. Turns out it wasn't. It wasn't coping well on the grass. It wasn't coping well, especially well on the patio. It was just flapping about. And I'm on Facebook uh, entomology pages and I'm on uh, What's This Bug? So I've got, it. I've got photos where I'm trying to find out, you know, what is this thing? I suspect, because I've played Animal Crossing, it might be some sort of aquatic beetle based on the way it's flapping about on land and it seemed to be doing better in the water. And I'm looking at its legs and it's got these hairy long legs. I'm thinking, is this a diving beetle? Long story short, yes, yes it is. It's a great diving beetle. They're the biggest diving beetle we have here in the UK. Fascinating insects. I've learned a lot about them since. I've basically been researching them constantly for the past three days. I think if I went on Mastermind and I put Great Diving Beetle as my category, I would do quite well. That being said, I think this is a diving beetle before the answers come in saying, yes, it is. And I put him in another bucket full of water, but also a lot of sticks and stuff so he can climb out if he needs to. So I'm asking around in the village, does anyone have uh, like a pond or something I can put this guy in? Because I'm fairly sure they live specifically in ponds. Anyway, while I'm researching this beetle, I come across a couple of pages saying that in Japan, they're popular as pets. Fun fact about me is I have quite a penchant for um, exotic pets in particular. My dream is to one day have a menagerie. That's always been my dream. If I won the lottery, I would literally buy land and build my own miniature zoo on it with like a bug house and a reptile house. I would have a field full of donkeys, capybaras and alpacas because these are like three of the most chill animals ever and I feel like they would get on quite well together. Maybe, maybe not. Point is, I'm thinking I haven't got the time or the money to work out the logistics of looking after this beetle. I can see that, you know, it's not particularly fussy in its requirements compared to a lot of aquatic creatures. But nonetheless, I haven't got an aquarium, I haven't got any of this stuff. And ultimately it was my wife in the end. She was sort of asking me, like, shall we keep him? Shall we keep him? Keep tempting me for the day. I'm like, I'm like, we'll let him fly off. Got him in a bucket in the back garden. He'll fly off in the night time, surely. And by the late evening where we've basically persuaded ourselves into keeping him. So, that is how we came to have a pet great diving beetle named Scooby because they're nature scuba divers. I decided I would like to share a journey of Scooby with you. To be honest, we're still in that first week where we don't have all of the stuff yet. We're waiting for things to turn up and there's a lot to do with him acclimatizing and we don't know how old he is. We haven't seen him eat yet, but then apparently some people are saying that they eat every day, other people are saying that they eat every couple of weeks. Um, 
there's not a great deal of research being done on them as pet. This is kind of interesting because it forced us to go over to youtube.jp and look at videos there. And it's fascinating how um, chill they are with these animals, with these little creatures. I was terrified to pick him up, but like in Japan, they just grab him out the river, it seems. So um, yeah, we're still in that first week of, you know, fingers crossed, is he gonna live? We've got an aquarium coming, we've got some better plants coming with, that, you know, oxidize the water quite well. We're just trying to create the ideal home for him. At the moment, he's in an old uh, cereal container that we've made into a makeshift aquarium. I suppose in Scooby survives uh, this next week, I will be posting updates of Scooby about once a month, as well as sharing a fact about the great diving beetle. These are really fascinating pets. There's particular things to look out for, but they're quite easy to look after. If you have an aquarium going that hasn't got fish in it, you can't put these guys with fish. You can't put these guys with anything other than the exact species that they belong to. So if it's a great diving beetle, it has to go with other great diving beetles. If it's a black diving beetle, which are much smaller, it has to go with other black diving beetles and they can't go with their larva. I will explain in future videos as to why not, unless you want to look it up yourself, of course. I think for me personally, this is going to be my gateway into um, looking after bugs. But I've always kind of fancied the idea of maybe having a scorpion or a tarantula, you know, or a mantis. But this is, um, this is much easier to look after than those things in its own way. All you need really is an aquarium to get started and then a bit of research. And on that note, please feel free to subscribe to my channel for obviously music and gaming content, but now just to check in on how Scooby's doing and learn about these really incredible creatures. And other than that, have a good one.